This session will cover the new features of uh, System Center Configuration Manager VNext. Configuration Manager VNext has a lot of new features. I will cover some of them. Okay, introduction. My name is Yevgen, Yevgen Dyshov. I worked for many years in Ukraine, then I lived in USA, and now I live in Poland, work for IBM as SCOM engineer. Also, I am a Microsoft MVP, Enterprise Mobility. I prefer to work with SCOM, CCM, Intune, and MDT. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask me at the end of this session, or during session, or after session, all feel free to write me an email. Okay, our agenda. A few words about roadmap, current limitations, and a lot of information about uh, infrastructure changes and new features. Okay, roadmap. I hope uh, all of you know that uh, the latest table version of uh, Configuration Manager is 2012 SP2 uh, or R2 SP1. So, if you are thinking uh, about migration from 2012 to Vnext, I don't know the uh, name of uh, Vnext, maybe 2016. So, if uh, you are thinking about this, you can upgrade your infrastructure with no problems. Uh, release date of uh, Configuration Manager Vnext is uh, the end of this year. Configuration Manager has a lot of new features, but main goals are Windows 10 management, full support of Windows 10, of new uh, version of operating system, and on-premises mobile device management. Uh, now, if you want to use uh, ECCM Next, you can download uh, current public release, which has name uh, Configuration Manager Technical Release 3. Uh, the latest version is 1510. Uh, means 2015 year and 10 means uh, October month. Okay, about current limitations. Uh, because it's a technical preview, it's not a stable uh, RTM, so you have a 60 days time bomb. Yeah. You can use uh, English only version. You can uh, install uh, only standalone primary site, so CAS, central administration site, is not supported. Uh, you can't upgrade from another build or to another build. If you want to install uh, Vnext, you need to have SQL Server 2012 with uh, cumulative update 2 or above or SQL Server uh, 2014. And you can support up to 10 clients. So it's just for lab. But uh, feel free to download this version, install and use. Okay, a few words about infrastructure. So, current uh, infrastructure, if I remember correctly, I mean uh, 2012, uh, supports up to uh, 400,000 computers. Uh, the next will support up to 600,000 computers. I think it's enough for you. Single primary site, uh, 2012 R2 supports up to um, 150,000. And the next will support up to 200,000. Uh, also, Configuration Manager VNext will support uh, SQL Server always on. Okay, about preferred management point, new feature. So now, Configuration Manager can uh, prefer a management point. So, if you want to use this feature, you need to just uh, check this button in uh, hierarchy settings properties. Uh, uh, clients prefer to use management points specified in boundary groups. And client, I would say, um, will prefer for the first to use a uh, management point which are specified in boundary group. So here, And then, if uh, this management point or management points are not available, client will use management points which are specified on the site level. So, I think 
it's, it's a good feature. Okay, one more neural service connect uh, service uh, connection point. Microsoft will provide updates for configuration measure through the cloud, through the internet. So you don't need to download a new uh, uh, ISO file from the internet from MSDN. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you just need to have an internet connection on your uh, site server. You need to install this role if you want to upgrade uh, configuration measure. If uh, if you want uh, to uh, have a new features. So feel free to install this role and configuration manager uh, will check every seven days by default and new updates on the internet. Also this role uh, is used for submitting usage and diagnostic data. So your configuration manager will collect information about your um, infrastructure, not a private information, but just uh, some basic information about configuration manager and send uh, sends to Microsoft. So it's up to you which uh, level of uh, diagnostic data um, you will use. Configuration manager will support, uh, I think, uh, three, three levels of uh, usage and diagnostic data. And if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to download updates uh, for configuration manager, you don't need to have Intune subscription. And, and demo about site upgrade, how you can configure this. Okay, updates and services in cloud services. So I have a role. Service connect, uh, connection point. So you can install this role uh, by default uh, when you install configuration manager uh, uh, site server, or you can do this later. Okay, about updates. So here I have uh, two updates. Uh, 1509 means September 2015, and 1510 means October uh, 2015. So first state is uh, download failed. It's not a problem. It's not uh, uh, an issue. Previously, I installed uh, 1509, and then when uh, 1510 was released, I downloaded it, installed it, and uh, uh, now 1509 is in download failed state. But it's not a problem. So, how it works? Configuration, if configuration manager uh, has an internet connection, configuration manager checks uh, every seven days the new updates or when you reboot uh, your configuration manager, maybe. Or you can restart uh, SMS executive uh, service, but it doesn't matter. So I have a few screenshots. I, when I uh, downloaded and installed this new update, I uh, took this screenshots. So configuration manager has this update in state available here. We can open logs. DMP downloader. Okay. This update was released uh, uh, on October 14, and come on. and I installed this update uh, this uh, update uh, next day. Okay, October 15, and message found a new available update. So configuration manager found this update and automatically downloaded this update. So you don't need to download this update. Configuration manager downloads this, uh, usually downloads this update on folder. Configuration manager, easy setup payload. So here I have two folders. One is for uh, September update and one for October update. 
the size of this folder is about one gigabyte and seven hundreds. Okay. So it's a full setup for configuration manager. I think uh, if you installed configuration manager before, you know uh, all of these files. The same is for uh, September, but the size is uh, uh, one gigabyte and three hundred megabytes. So then, after download. You have four buttons here, install, update, pack, run, prerequisite check, retry installation if you uh, have some problems, and client update options. So state is prerequisite check, pass it with warnings. So I clicked run prerequisite checks and I uh, got some warnings. So how, how can I check it? Monitoring. Site service and status. Okay. My current ver uh, version is 15.10. And this is a status of uh, prerequisites and installation process. So when I run a prerequisite check, uh, configuration manager checks a lot of settings. SQL server, database, active directory, active directory schema, uh, uh, accounts for SQL Server, accounts for Configuration Manager, and so on and so on. So, and here I have one war warning. That my SQL Server doesn't have enough memory for my Configuration Manager, but it's enough for lab. I, uh, I think I use uh, two gigabytes for uh, SQL, but Microsoft recommends to have uh, at least eight gigabytes. It's too much for 10 clients, so we have a warning. But it's not an issue, it's not a problem, it's not an error, it's just a warning. So a warning uh, can give us uh, okay. uh, so this warning allows us to install a new update. And then Prerequisite check completed with warning, but no failure. So then I can click. Okay, the same message here. Yeah, prerequisite checks, pass it with warnings. Okay, I showed this. Right click, install update pack. Right-click or feel free to use this button, so it's up to you. Then wizard with a few pages. So you need to, if you have some warnings, uh, you need to check uh, this uh, checkbox. Continue installation and ignore prerequisite check warnings. So if you do not click, you can't install. It's very easy. Okay, click next. Of course, accept accept the license terms. Okay, very important feature: options for client uh, update. Later, I will cover this topic: uh, how you can test your new version of uh, configuration manager client. But in this case, I, I checked uh, that I don't need to have two versions of clients. I will use the one version version and I choose upgrade without testing. So it means that a new configuration manager um, client package will be used for a new installation. Click next. Here we don't have any new features, but I think in configuration manager RTM uh, we can uh, check and we can choose a new features. So maybe we don't need to, to use uh, all of them, but maybe just some of them. So we can 
I choose these features here in this uh, wizard page. OK, confirmation. And wizard completed successfully. And when you close your configuration manager console and open this again, you will see a message that new, uh, new version of the console is available. You click OK. Configuration Manager install new console, you open new console and work with uh, Configuration Manager with new update. Very easy. All right. Questions? Okay. New features for software updates. Uh, how many of you use uh, Automatic deployment rules. Few of you. OK. So now you can use one automatic deployment rules with multiply deployments. I will show you uh, in a minute. Also, configuration measure support service uh, server cluster. So now you can update your uh, server cluster. And you can run WSAS cleanup task manually. One more demo. It will be a short demo. OK, I have a few uh, automatic deployment rules. And here you can uh, click Add Deployment. And specify a new collection for the same deployment. Previously in 2012, uh, if you want to do this, uh, if you wanted to do this, you needed to create uh, you needed to create it uh, deployment rule for every collection. Okay. So now you can choose another collection. I don't know. Configure deployment settings, configure schedule, configure user experience, alerts, download settings. But you don't need to configure uh, rules for automatic deployment rule. And you don't need to uh, create or use uh, the package. Yeah? So because I specified the settings here. So rules, criteria. Uh, for this uh, automatic deployment rule and uh, deployment package. And a few words about WSAS cleanup. Here I can uh, choose this option, but only once. So I need to do this manually. If I want to run WSAS cleanup wizard after uh, software update point synchronization. So WSAS will, uh, will clean options, uh, sorry, will clean uh, old updates. They will be superseded. Yeah. They will be expired. And WSAS can, can do this, but you need to do this manually. OK, compliance settings. No demo for compliance settings, because it's uh, very easy. Now configuration manager uh, support supports uh, for wind. Supports Windows 10 compliance settings. And uh, we have uh, improved workflow for creating mobile device uh, configuration items. OK, about client, I uh, said a few words about this previously. About client, now you can use two uh, version, versions of uh, Configuration Manager clients. How it's possible? So if you want to do this, you must uh, use 
update and servicing. I uh, explained how it works. Yeah? So you must use this. And uh, now we have a new um, checkbox here in uh, client upgrade. So if you want to use a new version of client, if you downloaded a new version of client, you can use this uh, for one collection, pre-production uh, pre collection. Pre deployment uh, and no pre production, so it's up to you how to uh, how to say. So, but if you don't want, you will use uh, the latest. Uh, you you will use the latest version of configuration manager client for all your clients. Okay, one more new feature. I think it looks cool. It's in use of Twitter Center. So no more application catalog. So. If you deploy applications or task sequences, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, uh, to user collection, user will see all new deployments in new software center. So no problems uh, with um, silver, silver light. Uh, I think you had these problems sometimes with application catalog. So you still need to install these two rules, application catalog website and application uh, catalog website okay let me check yeah and web, web service point so you need to have these two rules uh, roles but you, you don't need to use application catalog so it works great trust me and it's a real screenshot from uh, my um, lab I will show you a bit later when uh, I will talk about operating system deployment. So that's all what I can say about this. It's really cool. OK, a few words about on-premises MDM. So now you can manage your mobile device, uh, your mobile devices and your computers with Windows 10 with MDM style. Yeah. If you want to uh, use on-premises MDM, you need to have um, PKI. You need to install two roles, uh, enrollment point and en enrollment uh, proxy point. You need to have Microsoft Intune subscription. And uh, you need to configure your management point for uh, supporting mobile devices. But why do we need to use on-premises MDM? So now we can manage uh, devices that uh, don't have internet connection or have a limited connection. So, but they will work as usual mobile devices, yeah, which uh, have internet connection. Okay, I hope you know what is Windows 10 servicing, what is current branch, long-term current branch, so I won't explain how it works because it's a long topic, so it's not a topic about configuration manager. And uh, unfortunately, it's not a my uh, screenshot. It's a screenshot from Configuration Manager uh, team blog. So now you can create, uh, I would say, something like a plan for your devices. And when Microsoft uh, releases a new updates for, uh, I'm not talking about uh, software updates, yeah, security updates and so on. When Microsoft releases a new update, uh, major updates for Windows 10, you can check uh, how many computers are ready for this update. So I created one service plan just for test. It doesn't work now because it's a technical preview. But I have two uh, Windows 10 clients. So you can create this plan as well and uh, give uh, Microsoft uh, your feedback, yeah, how it works. Okay. Operating system deployment. One more cool feature which I do like. Windows P pure cache. So how it works? It works like a branch cache. Okay. So, for example, you have a branch a remote branch and you uh, don't have a server with distribution point role. So you can 
use one of uh, one of computer, one of branch computer, or a few of them as distribution points. So you can deploy content to this uh, personal computer. You can deploy uh, operating system image, driver packages, uh, packages and programs, and uh, additional boot images. Unfortunately, Windows P per cache doesn't support uh, applications and software updates. But anyway, it's really cool that your computer uh, boots and can't and can uh, find a content on the local peer. Yeah, on the local peer, you don't need to. Uh, this computer uh, won't uh, ask a distribution point for a content. So if you have, I don't know, one megabit uh, network uh, connectivity or two megabits for your branch, you have five or 10 or 50 computers. So it's really cool. So, and I will show you a demo. So if you want to use Windows P per cache, you need to configure the sequence variables for a uh, collection. You need to uh, configure client settings and you need to uh, configure one more the sequence step. Okay, and a big demo about this. Okay, about client settings. We have new uh, settings. Windows P per cache, it's very easy. I uh, choose uh, here, yes, enable configuration manager client in full operating system to share content. I didn't uh, change uh, the ports, so I left, uh, I left them by default. And I do not use HTTP, I do not uh, use a PTI infrastructure, so um, I use HTTP here. Okay. About the sequence variables. I have two variables for Windows P pure cache. So one uh, is SMS test pure download, which means your computers will work as Windows P, uh, Windows P pure cache uh, clients as hosts. So they will, uh, they will host files. And second, preserve content, which means after operating system installation, after the uh, whole process, client uh, will store content in uh, configuration measure client cache and one more settings so i created a task sequence with uh, just one step it's a new type it's a new task sequence uh, step download package content here you can choose packages what you have. I choose client packages and Windows 10 Enterprise. If you want to use as a step, just add general, not general, excuse me, software, download package content. And I deployed this uh, test sequence to one of my computers. Here I can find, uh, here I can I uh, choose a place into the following location. So the sequence working uh, directory, custom pass, or configuration manager client cache. Okay, and I have a deployment for all the stop and server clients. It's uh, avail uh, available, not required. Here I have a client computers with Windows 10 Enterprise. Okay. With name Win10, uh, Win10 Next 2. So, okay, about software center, new software center. I think look looks cool. Yeah. Here I have download cache, the sequence with a download cache name. I uh, run this previously. 
case where I just have a reinstall button, not install, and about cache, file explorer. So three packages, so three folders. Configuration manager client, configuration manager client, and uh, Windows 10. Install Vim file, more than three gigabytes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, good question, thank you. You need to increase the cache size. It's very simple. If you want to, uh, if you want to deploy to a client computer a custom reference image which has, I don't know, 8 gigabytes, yeah, and uh, by default, uh, configuration, measure, uh, configuration measure client uh, uh, cache has 5 gigabyte limits. No, in, in this case, um, I'm not sure, but uh, it works just with client cache. So Windows P per cache uh, will use a, a client cache. So you need to increase a client cache. cache. I increase uh, I increase it uh, a limit for 10 gigabytes, but I, I don't need because I have just three gigabytes Im image. But yeah, you, you can increase uh, client uh, client cache. So, and now we can run a computer, boot a computer. Uh, now we have a limit for uh, technical preview. We have a limit for boot images. So it works just with boot images. So it doesn't work uh, with uh, Pixie deployment. Unfortunately, I hope I hope um, RTM version uh, will support uh, Pixie deployment. So I hope all of you know what is uh, boot image, task sequence boot image. Yeah. I created ISO file and I boot from CD this computer. I hope everything is clear. Okay. I choose to install Windows 10. It's very easy. Can give a name. Next. Okay. So we're looking for a content uh, with ID TP3000D. So it's my uh, operating system. And we're trying to connect to Win10 next to firma.com. So set an IRL address. And here you can find that object is SCM branch cache port by default and we are copying this file not from distribution point but from client computer okay and now we are downloading this file so Here, so I can prove that we are downloading this file from uh, Windows 10, not from distribution point. So. I think it's real cool. And now I can shut down this computer. 
or no okay i won't because i can shut down my my laptop it, it, it's it's very close here i don't want to risk okay and it works trust me no we, we can uh, spend 40 minutes for a uh, whole process but i think i think uh, if uh, uh, if you use configuration manager, you know how it looks like. Okay. Okay. One more minute. I will get a message that uh, uh, file was downloaded successfully. Okay, downloaded file from Windows 10, uh, Win 10 Next 2. SCM branch cache to e drive a semester sequence packages ID of package name of file is install vim and typical process of operating system installation All right, what's next? Windows 10 in place upgrade. So you can upgrade your Windows 7, 8, and 8.1. So you can upgrade uh, the operating system and retain uh, the same application, settings, user data, and so on. So with no problems, but uh, we have a lot of limitations. So for first, we can't uh, use a custom image. So, okay, if you want to uh, implement some major changes, we can't use in place upgrade. So, if uh, we want to use a custom reference image, if you want to change the computer domain membership, partition disk, change the architecture from x86 to x64, if you want to implement UEFI instead of instead of BIOS. Uh, if you want to, we, if you want to modify a system language, so and so on, so on. So we can't use Windows 10 in place upgrade. So it's very easy. You download files, you copy it files from uh, your DVD or from ISO, which you downloaded from uh, MSDN subscription, and packed this ISO, copy it, uh, imported these uh, files to um, configuration manager, and feel free to do. Uh, in place of great migration in place of in place of great sorry yeah so and i will show you how it works if you want to do this you need to have upgrade packages previously it was operating system uh, install packages now it's um, upgrade packages some minor change change Windows 10 Enterprise, so add operating system upgrade packages, specify folder, install Windows 10. Here I have, uh, I have a file from ISO, so I need to copy all of these files. Next, next, finish. I think you have an experience with this. And then I need to create a test sequence. It's a new type of test sequence, upgrade an operating system from up, uh, upgrade package. Next. I'm choosing my Windows 10 upgrade package. Edition is enterprise. I do not specify a product key. Next, I do not install any software updates, but I, I can. I do not install applications. Next, and okay, that's all. Then I need to deploy this test sequence uh, to collection. I have one test sequence. Upgrade to Windows 10, it's very easy. Just three test sequence steps. Yeah. Here I have install Windows 10. 
we have more steps. Here just three. The very first step uh, check checks uh, the uh, system settings. So checks uh, hardware, minimum memory, minimum processor speed, and uh, uh, current operating system. So it's a client or it's a server. So in my case, in my case, it's a client. Yeah. Upgrade operating system, my upgrade package, and restart computer. Very easy. Okay, I have Windows 7. Computer name Windows 7, domain Windows 7 Professional, so there is no magic. Some user files on the desktop, and I use uh, just a domain account. Uh, usual domain account for a typical user, user one. So I need to run software center. Here I have the sequence upgrade to Windows 10, which I created previously. Yes, I want to install operating system. And that's all from my side. I just need to wait half an hour, one hour. So it depends on hardware. So of course I don't waste my time and I have I have a checkpoint for this computer. Okay, it's told. Huh? Okay, what do you offer? But I don't remember a local user name. I hope uh, administrator is not. Oops. Um, come on. Okay. One more try. Mm. All right.
it's not me, it's a Windows, you know. It always happens. Okay. Okay, the same name, the same domain, but it's not a Windows 7 professional, it's a Windows 10 Enterprise. I'm not sure, but here we can try to check user one files on the desktop. Okay. So it works. And a few slides about applications and point uh, protection. Okay, about applications, what's new? Now Configuration Manager can uh, uh, side loading apps in Windows 10. You can deploy Windows uh, Business Store application and you can uh, do a deployment, application deployment to Windows 10 devices, which uh, works as on-premises MDM devices. About endpoint protection. So now we have one more new role, endpoint protection manager role. So now you can um, security scopes um, for endpoint protection anti-malware policies. And if you use Windows 10, and you want to protect your computer, you want to secure your computer, uh, you will use Windows Defender. And you can download Windows Defender uh, anti-malware as uh, you do this usually for uh, endpoint protection. Okay. And Microsoft Azure. So configuration measure uh, supports Microsoft Azure and we have uh, three scenarios for uh, configuration measure. First scenario is configuration measure in a Microsoft Azure, so it works as uh, Microsoft Azure um, virtual computer, yeah, and also our clients in a Microsoft Azure. Second scenario is you have a configuration manager in Microsoft Azure, and you can manage uh, your on-premises clients. And the uh, third scenario is uh, you can install some configuration manager side system roles in Microsoft Azure but your site server and your clients are on-premises. So it's very easy. Okay, and I have, I think, 10 minutes for questions. I hope you have questions about Configuration Manager the next. It's very clear. It should work. <laughs> huh? Really? You don't have questions? I thought it's uh, an interesting topic for uh, system administrators, uh, for system administrators who uh, use Configuration Manager 2012 because a lot of new features in the next. Okay. To be, honest, to be honest with you, I don't know how it works because it is not described now in uh, um, documentation. But I think that you need to to upgrade your central administration site as usual, yeah, and then upgrade your um, primary sites. About uh, secondary sites, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure that you need to do this. But, okay, yeah, 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 really, but yeah, interesting question, I, uh, I will ask uh, Configuration Manager product team how it will work. Do you have a central administration site in your infrastructure? Yes. How many clients do you manage? 
I am not uh, asking about company name. So Okay. Any other questions? So what's written from uh, R2 XT1 to the new version uh, in the update process? I didn't see the option for upgrading the console file and the file. Now you can't you can't upgrade uh, from uh, 20, uh, 2012 to the next because it's not a stable version. Uh, yeah. Yes, you you will. Uh, you, um, it will it it will be supported. Yeah, for sure. So you just need to mount uh, ISO file with new configuration manager. Uh, click next, text finish, and so with no problems. Okay. Thank you for coming. I hope it was interesting for you. Thank you.